everyone. Welcome back to the Brandon K Show, broadcasting live to Facebook and YouTube. Here with my friend, Mr. Frank. Good afternoon. Mr. Frank, we, we were on here just a few days ago talking about dealing with depression, which was a good one. We had tips and tricks for dealing with depression right here. You can go watch that episode for, for more talk about that. And the conversation pretty quickly turned into talking about dealing with obsession because obsession and dealing and depression are pretty tied together. You're, if you have an obsession, you might get depressed. If you have depression, you might be obsessing about something. Mm -hmm. So the tools are, are very much linked. Um, when we start to talk about obsession in a, in an unhealthy way, what is, what is an obsession in an unhealthy way? I have definitions here. Before that, I'm going to say, Brandon K show is brought to you by gift apply eco-friendly wrapping paper for charity. 33% goes to charity of these great causes like Give Kids the World. Um, stand for the silent. Check out giftapply.com and use promo code BK to show for 25% off. Yeah. Yep. But now we get to try to help people who deal with obsession. And Frank and I were talking before. And he's like, okay, what do you mean by obsession? And so I said, what do I mean by obsession? <laughs> and I went and I, I looked up obsession in the dictionary and it says, what is obsession? The state of being obsessed with someone or something. Okay, so then you have to go, what does obsessed mean? Obsessed means to preoccupy, pre preoccupy or fill the mind of someone or something continually intrusively and to a troubling extent <clears throat> to have our mind preoccupied by something we don't want it to be preoccupied with um, or, or preoccupied with or constantly worrying about something yeah it's the constantly right that's the words that in red there yeah we could say repeatedly we could you know right. As it, someone gets thrown off on, oh, constantly means all day, every day, but repeatedly right. would be, you know, too much. So I yeah, you, you could forget for a second because like you fall down or something, but the thing is, it's going to repeat, isn't it? It's just going to come right back. Like I can talk about, I have we we call our addictions obsessions for for one, but mm -hmm. I also had these. Growing up, I always had these obsessions over women, you know, throughout e each grade of my life. It was like, I like that one. I mean, I'm, I know, I know guys like girls in general and they're like, oh, I like, you know, they're, they're always, we're always in a, a, a state of finding which girl we like and, and liking them and thinking about them. But like, for me, it was like always one girl. And then it's like, no other girls matter. You just like get hyper focused on like one girl, you know. Did you ever go through that, Frank? Yeah, I wouldn't say so often, but definitely at times there was only one girl. Yeah, no question, there was only one girl in the world at times. So you know, it's a crush, but it, you know they could also call it an infatuation, right? And I, I remember, I remember I hung something up on my wall in high school from a magazine that said, are you attracted or are you obsessed? It was from like one of these teen magazines. <laughs> and it was like, just having knowledge of like, do you just like this person and want to want to spend time with them? Or are you obsessed and have a, a health, an unhealthy infatuation? You know. Dude. So an infatuation is an intense but short lived passion or admiration for someone or something. Mm, mm, okay. Which is interesting because it's just like, it's just like um, short-lived, I guess. 
Short lived is definitely the word in red there, right? Yeah. But we're going to start getting into the advice about what I found to help me. You know, I had, it was kind of like one, kind of like one crush a year, one crush a year. And it would always be like, just like beating myself up about, about like, oh, wow, I'm like too, like, I'm too scared to go talk to her. And maybe I'll talk to her on like the last day of school or something. And then just, just like in Ooh. that, like just overthinking and obsessing about like, but like, oh, it's too scary to like go and ask her out in front of everybody um, sure. during the school year. But like on the last day, I want to tell her I like her and get her number and, you know, and then not doing that and just being like chickening out. And then uh, and then the cycle repeats. <laughs> yeah, it's painful. It's painful. Ouch. <laughs> but and for that reason, I'm doing it to myself. And I know I'm doing it to myself. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Because you repeat it. Cause, well, because I repeat it, but also because like I'm the one who's not, um, who's allowing myself to have those thoughts and who's not taking action and like trying to get them to get to know them as a person. I'm like yeah. the one. I'm the one who's yeah. like in the the cycle of my own doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So am I, bro. And so I learned. That's a, that's a very, very accurate description, a very good description of a phenomenon that I have dealt with forever and uh, I've never really articulated. But Can we say something about it again. But we, but we attack it kind of, <clears throat> we talked about it on the dealing with depression, like the automatic negative thoughts. It's kind right. of like just automatic obsessive thoughts, kind of at a certain point. Hmm. Okay. And so our yeah. Frank and I's number one thing when I read in this list, our number one thing was mindfulness. So, <laughs> so no matter what intrusive thoughts we have, and these can be obsessive thoughts, these can be OCD thoughts, they can be uh, an infatuation thoughts or drinking and using thoughts or um, gambling thoughts or whatever, whatever vices, but mindfulness is curative is something a guy I listen to says, which means it can cure anything. So like it's, it's healing and mending mindfulness. If we're doing something to ourselves, if our mind is doing something to us and we're at the mercy of our mind, we have control over our mind at the end of the day. And, you know, unless we're completely insane, you know. Well, we have we have some. We can sort of get better at it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of limited, too. It's a pro it's like a like a process. It's like a like if I were obsessing all day, every day or 70 percent of the day. When I start to be mindful of it, it might only go down to 65 percent. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be like like. Oh, all of a sudden I can cure, cure, cure myself instantly. Right, but, right, right. but as far as being mindful of something, the more I'm mindful of something, the easier it gets, the less I notice that the obsessive thoughts can creep in. Spot on. That's, I mean, that's, I, I think that's like the very, like the uh, backbone of the mindfulness thing is to you know relieve you know yourself of some kind of problem because well you're catching for it you have like a strainer up and you're like catching for you know something and then when you find it in there well look you have some new you have a new tool you have some mastery you didn't have before you yeah, know, you, yeah. You have some capability you didn't have before so it's it's a great thing yeah um you had some advice about how to be mindful well, it's funny when it comes to obsession. <clears throat> a, I would, I haven't had it in a long time, but I have had it. And there was a time when I was obsessed about a woman, and I could say I probably thought of her 
several hundred times per day for some time. And if I had known that it was that many times, and if I had known like what percentage of the day I was spending on it, and if I had to re review the reports, like I was like a budget administrator, okay, and the expense reports came in and it said, you have been spending like 47% of your waking hours on this and you've had 1137 incidents this month. Then I think I would be forced to look at that and say, I've detected a problem here in my administrative capacity. Sure. Yeah, that's being mindful. That's that's looking at it from an outside perspective, looking at it from the boss's perspective instead of the employee, right. instead of the employee's perspective. Dig. Right, right. And so then I think it gives you some power over it because then you get to say, instead of it choosing 47%, I'm going to pick the number now. Mm -hmm. Did you, was it some form of an awakening for you to realize that you were obsessing or did you know you were obsessing as you were in it? No, realize it later. Right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, I even as mindful and intelligent as I can be and I can have the thing on my wall, like it can still kind of overwhelm you and you're not thinking about it and it's just happening. And you might think it's natural and normal at first and then it it becomes unhealthy and you don't realize it's unhealthy till later, maybe. Yeah, it definitely depends where you are in your walk. I mean, I wasn't really into mindfulness when I was doing the obsessing. Mm hmm. I learned it in recovery because after I got obsessive, I then I got severe anxiety mm -hmm. and then I had to get into recovery. Right. Right. And then that's where they taught me about mindfulness. Mindfulness. What? Who taught you about mindfulness? Well, in recovery, I learned about the general idea, but then I read about it myself at Eckhart Tolle to actually get a, my own little background. But, um, they certainly had things like acceptance, you know, and just that one tool. Ooh, that was a world beater. That was a world changer for me. That was really a, a, a banger and a life changer. <laughs> and you talked about it on dealing with depression. Our last episode is like acceptance is like a portal for you and it you let it wash over you. I mean, it was hard to kind of explain what it means, a portal, but you let it wash over you and, and then you take the acceptance into your portal, into your permanent essence, which is your higher self. And and uh, kind of is that description of, of how acceptance helps you? Yes. I find that acceptance is the portal. Right. And I've and also I go. Yeah. acceptance was the first episode of this show here on YouTube this year and uh, i learned some severe acceptance this this year as well which is you know i can't control anything i mean i can't control the overthinking and the obsessing i i'm not going to come up with some magic solution to uh my obsession you know it's going to be a daily process i'm not going to be able to you know make um I can't control how other people feel. I can't control if people like me or don't like me, if people want me in their life or don't want me in their life. I can only control myself and and you know and accept that I can't control everything else around me, you know. So that acceptance has been crucial for me too. Um, I'm learning it more and more as my portal into, into my happiness and um, focusing on what I can change and I can create, I can create things, I can help people, I can, um, I can make music, I can practice music, I can work a job or, or try to do good health wise my diet and exercise but i can't um yeah control how people feel me and perceive me
So I also got another one which we talked we talked about not even about upset not even about women or any or anything else, but a lot of us can get obsessive on what other people think. And so I my advice on that is simple, easy, what other people think, none of my business. It doesn't affect me. I don't have to take it personal. I don't have to assume what other people are thinking. You know, so the all those together are what what they're mm. thinking. None of my business. Yeah, especially when you when you say, uh, you know, I don't need to think. What are they thinking? I like don't. I don't need to answer the question. I can let the mind put that up as a lazy question, and I can just not answer it. Mm. And when you were saying it, it felt very liberating when you were saying it. You were like, right, don't even answer the question. Let let the mind worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Let the mind These people worry. have enough to worry about today, and I have enough to worry about today, and let's not add to it. Let's go about our business. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's just not helpful. Um, you know, we we have to have enough trust in ourselves that we come across as a nice normal person and beyond that there's i can't control what other people think of me so yeah right we got some sense of how to stay out of the who's go because we're not doing uh disorderly conduct you know right there's some sense of it and that's like the fear the the fear of the thoughts could be like something's wrong with me i don't um that that's the, the 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 fear inside me of, of a, like why I would why I would care what other people think and why I believe other people mm. care what other people think is they have a fear that something's wrong with them and they did something bad and it's like I just go around and and, and I'm they not, are bad yeah and I I can just say I'm not bad I know I'm not bad so if someone well, thinks <laughs> what I to me that's isn't that trampling on the general case of the preconditioned mind and not so much the particular argument of the preconditioned mind. Like that whole thing about, I have an idea that I'm bad and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. This yeah. is just one of the, the classic things that the preconditioned mind says, but it's got quite a little variety of things too that it can say, but they're really monumental, such as people don't like me and you're not like, I'm not likable and I'm an idiot, you know, or sometimes we say it in third person, second person, you're an idiot and you're this and you're that. I've heard dozens and hundreds of people just be like, they they think they sound like an idiot. They think they said something idiotic, and they worried that someone perceived that they said something idiotic. And then, and then it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like for me, I'm just like, hey, I might say something idiotic every now and then, but it doesn't really, I don't really care what you think, anyways. Well, you know, but the preconditioned mind is liable to give us an erroneous like valuation of that okay and it's going to come up with it and say i made an idiot out of myself and you really might not have now if you did it's no longer a mistake if you learn from it and you realize oh i made an idiot by there so oh, is there something i can learn from it should i have not said this should i have not said if you learn from it it's no longer a mistake yeah you know yeah always yeah i wouldn't put up a block so much as to not analyze my behavior but Right. I'm gonna analyze my behavior to such an extent that I have to shut it down. I have to shut 90% of it down or else I overthink and, and obsess, you know? Yeah, but I definitely, I think in the general case, it's like, I don't even want to know what they're thinking. Good Lord, I've got enough on my mind. You know what I mean? I Let it go. The preconditioned mind is all concerned about that because the preconditioned mind is largely composed of like the disapproval of the primary caregivers. Mm -hmm. So it says, oh, care a lot about if mommy is, is pleased, care a lot about if daddy is pleased. It wants you to care a lot about whether other people are pleased. Yeah, yeah, and it's like if someone insults you, you feel like it, it's like your parents insulted you and you go back to like that wound from the caregiver i mean i i could see how that all ties together i mean that's that's psychology and everything but i mean just from my personal experience it does feel like i had some wounds from early life 
and they get reawakened and it's kind of like someone insults you and you go back to how you felt when you were a kid or something so for that yeah. reason it's my personal experience Sure. Well, the idea is to try not to identify with it. Why? Because it's the preconditioned mind. It's not the current you choosing to think about this. It's really somebody else's ideas about you that were burnished into your head and they recur for the rest of your life. So the idea is not to identify with it because unrecognized, we identify with it. And in identifying with it, we relive the pain, that primordial pain. It's awful pain. I do it all the time. It's awful. Yeah. No, I mean, <clears throat> I think it's it's how we're wired. And and uh, you can do a lot of work on yourself. And, and you're still going to have the – you might still be wired that same way. Because we're human. That's what being a human, how we're wired. I mean – yeah, it's a preconditioning. So it's 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 a hard wire, I think. But the idea is we have something. We have mindfulness. We have mindfulness. Um, and we say that's the preconditioned mind talking. And if it is the preconditioned mind talking, why don't I opt not to identify with it? I'm not going to fight against it. I'm not going to try to stop it from having some thought waft through my head. Well, why don't I say that's not me? That's really the voice of my primary caregivers, and let it rest in peace. You know, let it let it be. Rest in peace. Yeah, I. I that's where I give myself caring, compassion, and just and just say, I'm a good person. I mean well. I'm doing my best. Um, I I am smart. Even if I said something dumb, I am still smart. You know, just like little reminders, little affirmations of, of how I make sure that uh, I, I treat myself with care and compassion so I don't let all those mean, preconditioned, intrusive thoughts take over, you know? Right. And then... It's um, a lot we've had to put up with. It's a lot we've had to put up with with those thoughts. Oh, yeah. I'm like my, my biggest, my own biggest enemy. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pain in the ass, those thoughts, really. So as it, atta as it attaches to obsession or the inner voice, uh, my advice is, you know, that I found because I have had success in, in not obsessing at, at times and, um, and currently, and it says, don't feed the beast. So the thoughts are going to come. It's, this is just another word for mindfulness, but it's just the thoughts are going to come and it's going to want to start chewing on something and, and taking time out of your day to sit there and obsess on something and strategize something, but, or feel something, you know? So when it comes to like an infatuation, you might want to sit there and listen to sad music or happy music. And it's like, I can choose whether I do that or not, you know? So as for feeding the beast, feeding the infatuation, it's just like you can avoid the music. You can avoid seeing the person if they're not a good person to, to be around. You can avoid talking about the person to, to others. And you can <clears throat> avoid um, plotting how to get with the person or, you know. Amen, to, brother. Yes. Control. Trying to control the situation, or and could we say if it's bad enough, and I've been there where it is, to even think in advance, what other things do I want to think about? I want to think about the Vegas Golden Knights for 10% of today, mm -hmm. and I want to think about my shopping list for 5% today, and I want to think about a Beatles song. I'm going to play three Beatles songs today so that I spend 12 minutes with the Beatles today. And suppose I said, I'm going to refuse to obsess all day. I'm going to make absolute certain just as a, a, a you know, an act of my will to, to think of other things today in addition so that I crowd out the obsession a little bit by putting things in to fight against it. And this is some of the best advice that um that you can be told I've, I've been in obsession and been told this advice and it's, it's hard to get to it like, right. similar to what you're saying now 
but and it because it takes you can only do it a little bit at a time sometimes. But yeah, right. best advice is to just focus on your own goals, your own life, and find something good in your own life, and just you know focus on your work and and your gym and your you know um, your creative oh, nice. creative outlet is huge for me. So, yeah, I had a mentor tell me, focus on the positive and the negative will disappear. It's good to crowd it out is, is what I think. I think it really is valuable. To, it was one time I heard something was, you want to feel normal, act normal. So you want to feel normal, go throughout your day, making all these little decisions that, are for yourself and for your authentic self and what you want in life and and to say you know if obsession is creeping in just say that doesn't serve me in this moment maybe i can redirect moment by moment right moment by moment after you do it 50 billion times it becomes easier to 50 billion the first time yeah if you get into you know why we're obsessing if it's about an infatuation um it's kind of like well why am i obsessing on this person but um but we don't even get along or they don't even like me or i've never even talked to them <laughs> so it's like the question is the shared values and goals. Do they have shared values and goals? Until you talk to that person, get to know them, get to know them for quite a while, you don't really know if you guys have shared values and goals. Right. And so the obsession is all just an illusion. Did you know the person you were obsessed with? <laughs> Did you had you talked to them? I I had, I had obsessions like I mentioned with with girls in in school. I never talked to him once. Wow. No, the only really bad obsession I had was with a woman that, you know, we had dated for a few months, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then she kicked me through the uh, uprights like a, like a field goal. Oh, it was like a, a, a rejection, like a dumping? Yeah. Dump. Dump oh. truck. Yes. Heavy duty dump truck. Yeah, yeah. And then and how long did it? last if you're i get it's it's even too embarrassing to admit let's just say i was definitely 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 obsessed for a long time yeah I, I i hear you and i know many people like this and many guys like this and and even a couple girls like this hmm. i don't know many girls but i know i think i remember girls get obsessed on guys too right yeah you had that um that lady on, what was her name? Mary? Not Mary. Mary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we had a guest on the show who talked about, hey, it's still still going, you know? Or it lasted a while, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's when it comes to obsessing, it's kind of like obsessing on some outcome I can't control. And when I'm doing that, I'm only hurting myself. And so... I have to remind myself of that. It's an illusion of control, overthinking, strategizing, obsessing. It's a illusion of control because um, I can, I can only. It's not. It's a. It's a fantasy and an, and an illusion. It's not reality. So I, I need to ground myself in reality. That's advice for myself. Right. So, you know, like, that's what acceptance, that's the opposite of acceptance. You know, it's like if we get dumped, and I've been dumped recently, it's like, um, it's like reality is, okay, I'm dumped. That's it. I just have to accept that, you know? And it's like as much as you if you wanted to try to fix it or whatever, it's like, I'm dumped, you know, until I'm not dumped. 
So that relates to what you were saying about, you know, acceptance. Like, did you, did you find it, is, did you find acceptance with your obsession? Eventually. Yeah. But it was only after I got into recovery, you know, and I got one into intensive outpatient and, um, you know, really took, you know, recovery like very seriously because I had my anxiety had gotten so bad that it was quite uh, debilitating. I can say it's a beautiful freeing feeling when you've had an obsession or an addiction for many years and then it just lifts. And you, you're like, oh, I don't think that way anymore. It's a very freeing, liberating moment. Mm, big time. Mm. Even, even to say, I obsess. I think about this person once a week instead of one, you know, a hundred times a day. You know what I mean? Right. That's right. That's a big improvement. Mm-hmm. So that is what's on the other side of recovery of mindfulness is, is that, and part of it is time heals all wounds. And, you know, I'm not going to be obsessed on the girl I was obsessed with in high school. Cause that was 20 years ago, you know, one hopes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My obsession in high school lasted too long. Is it? But it was just like, yeah, it was just like, not having enough in my own life and just like always fantasizing that like my life would be so much greater with this person, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, but I mean, identifying with the ego, right? The ego has that thought, you know, that's not you. That's your ego's thought, you know, and uh, you're identifying with it because why not? Your parents told you it was true. It must be true. Say more. Ah, uh, what was the exact phrase again? Well, I was saying it's like a fantasy that like your life would be better with like a certain person or a certain thing in your life. But then okay. the, that was the ego. So like, which part of that is the ego? Like the, the grass is greener part where, oh, sure. Everything will be perfect. Once this one thing is fixed, then, you know, nothing else, then everything else will be solved. But if we have a, a, a problem-creating mind, no, as soon as we think we, quote-unquote, solve a certain problem, it'll be another problem, another problem, another problem. Now, when it comes to finding a life partner, I agree, that doesn't sound like it, the repetition is so much a part of that, though. Right? Because it could be a one-time life decision. It might not be a thing that goes again and again and again. I mean, you might just get married and you might be happy the rest of your life, you know? So it's a little different than most things, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I feel like you could get married and then be like, oh, if this person just behaved this way, then I'd be happy. Like, I feel like you oh, could be yeah, that's, Or, oh, yeah. my kids will be happy. Like, you could always be doing it. Once we get in a bigger house, where we have, like, you could always... Right. Because if you have a problem creating mind that you identify with, yeah, you'll just find another problem. There's no doubt in my mind that the woman I didn't marry would have found endless problems with me, sir. There would have been a list that would have been growing faster over the years, not slower. I think that's when you get into this concept of like happily ever after and like the fantasy is like, oh, once I get everything in place and I have the right girl and I have the right house, everything will be good. But like the true to me, and I've you know had girlfriends and I've had places, and and I've gotten things that I wanted to get. But it's kind of like you get on the other side of it, and um, it's really just living and accepting reality is going to be the, the where you find happiness, not in getting the thing, not getting the outward thing, you know. Generally, no, but you know, I know some people who are very wonderfully happily married, sure. and oh, sure, they're the you know minority cases. No, well, but, I mean, you know, well, it really did turn out wonderfully in some cases. I mean, you, you must say they're bringing great happiness to each other's lives. I mean, you know, I, oh, yeah, well, that's not my point. My point is, is that yeah, they're in a state of acceptance and gratitude, and that 
and we as single men can also be in a, a state of acceptance and gratitude. Absolutely. We have. Absolutely. Even much more so we can be if we wanted to. It's, it's not about the it's not about the partnership or who they're with. It's it's about the attitude that comes comes with it. And for them, that helps them be grateful and, and accepting. Right. And, but that's not what you don't need to have the outside thing no. to have the happiness. No, the Bhagavad Gita, which goes back like 4,000 years, 4,500 years, somewhere like that, or no, less than that. But in any case, um, supposedly I, I've been taught that the, one of the main lessons is not um, like identifying with the fruits of our labors. Right. Because when you plant a fruit tree, it might not come up. All you can do is plant, you know, till the soil well and plant it well and water it well and, and tend it well, but you can't make a, tr a fruit come out. That's the thing. And and um, I can just apply that to this Brandon K show, which is I can sit here and have great conversations with you and um, and go to studio and, and have planned fun shows. And I can plant and plant and plant. But. I can't control the outcome, you know. I can't control how many people watch, or right. if people like it or don't like it, you know. Right. But that doesn't mean that I, I can't. Love everyone watching very much. Oh yeah, no one's watching. <laughs> no, they will. They will be later. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that um, I can just enjoy the planting. I can just enjoy the planting and enjoy yeah. life without the fruits. Did. Or these are my friends. I just enjoy what I do. So yes, yes, did. Beautiful. And um, yeah, on the topic of obsession, you know, if if any of this stuff wasn't helpful, I recommend can talk to a professional. I recommend I, I ended up in intensive outpatient rehab myself. And, um, you know, going somewhere to reprogram your mind or 12 step groups are all helpful. Um, seek what works for you. Continue to seek. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up and say it's hopeless. Um, patience. And um, it's important to find others who understand. And that's largely what I do here is like I'm, I want to put myself out there and say I understand, you know. Because I felt like a crazy person when I was just going around looking for solutions. I was like, people are like, oh, why don't you just get over it? Why don't you just get over it? And I was like, eh, it's a little hard. A little harder for me. <laughs> right. um, so finding others who understand and then maybe by talking to them, you'll help others and think of others. And and uh, it'll be a process of um, helping others and understanding each other and and not just sitting there obsessing on something that um, is largely an illusion most of the time. Yeah, and I would say uh, uh, I don't take myself seriously, but I take my recovery seriously because if you are in a really bad place, and thank God most people are not, but a lot of people are in a really bad place. I've been in a really bad place many times in my life. And it's really you know, important to uh, get out of it and, and and not live forever in it, but to do something about it and turn it around and get out of it. Yeah, and that's when when you get into the concept of fear versus faith. So, you know, in recovery, we talk about faith. I mean, in all kinds of different recovery. And But yeah, in... Um, which is when I believe in having faith in ourselves. I believe in having faith in a higher power of the universe and also having faith in humanity, which is a tough one, but I have it written up on my wall, which means, Hey, it look, it might look like all these wars and all these, these politics and, um, fights and and issues are you know the world like humans 
um, finding almost headed in the wrong direction. But at the end of the day, we're all still here. Society continues. And, you know, you could look at the numbers and say, you know, certain parts of society are still doing well. And hopefully all around the world is doing better than ever. Um, but you have to have faith that that's because of humanity. Where we are, where we are at right now, because of humanity. So I try to have faith in humanity. It would be great. I mean, if humanity would come to a higher plane, like on Star Trek, where everybody, you know, just uh, uh, no longer competes against one another, and there's, uh, you know, I mean, they don't need to fight against one another to survive. There's a super abundance of goods and services, yeah. and like everybody is able to live in peace because nobody has any needs that they need to you know, trample on somebody else's, you know, a uh, 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 person for. We're not so, quite there. <laughs> no, we are not, you know, but we see so many motion, so much motion in all directions at the same time. Isn't it fantastic? We see things that look really good, like we're moving in a great direction. Then we see these dark specters that make us think that, wow, we're, we're moving in a worse direction than ever before. And then we see things like, we don't know exactly what to make out of what these Russians are doing with this Putin thing. Are they about to overthrow Putin? And it's going to turn out to be a really good thing. Or is Putin going to get a hundred times worse and make the whole thing a hundred times worse? We're like, we don't even, we don't even know any of these things, you know, and maybe it's unknowable. Maybe nobody knows. Maybe it's still just being worked out. Of so, I mean, I'm less, I'm less faithful because I don't know. It doesn't have to end, you know, in a way where the, the earth story goes well, or the humans on earth story goes well. It doesn't necessarily, it seems to me, according to the laws of the universe have to end well. It does not have to end well, but um, we kind of just have to accept whatever happens. Right. And, I, and that I do. And it's well in the sense to me of outside of the game that we're in, outside of the virtual reality headset we're wearing, yeah, it's all good. Everything evens out. You know what I mean? If I hit somebody, I was only hitting myself. It was only me hitting me. It's all even in the end. Right, right. Well, yeah, for the faith in humanity thing, it's just kind of like I can't predict the future, obviously, but just based on – where we are now and based on the fact that i was able to be born into a certain society and you know we hadn't killed ourselves and destroyed ourselves yet yeah. we have, to have some faith that um that we can stay on that track you know i hope so brother man i know i hope so because i'm sure you know there's been close calls in the past you know there's been oh hell yes cl close calls all the time and um, it always seems like it's hanging by a thread. It always no feels like generation. Thread. you could get you can get tied up on that. If we're talking about society, uh, that it always feels like we're hanging by a thread. But I was talking about faith in humanity, which is it always seems like we're hanging by a thread, but we never fall off the edge. Like the whole, you know, we're not destroyed yet as a, as an as yeah. a whole. We're hanging and, tough. And there's people who are maybe living in war circumstances and, you know, we pray for them and, and hope that um, they find their solutions and, and, and grow and, and get into, you know, I'm not saying that, I mean, I know that I'm blessed and privileged to be in America, be born in America and not have not ha ever had to have left America. So, but even so I have faith in humanity around the globe, not just in America, you know, Right. Well, it's been a long road. You know, we've had this civilization for about 6,000 years going on now. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got, we've got cell phones now. We got, we got smartphones now. Are you kidding? I mean, you know, one smartphone is better than 5,000 Egyptian pyramids, if you ask me. And, uh, uh, you know, we've come a long way. Uh, it's a beautiful story. It's an interesting and beautiful story. And full recovery into total Star Trek utopia yeah. is, not, is not impossible. Not impossible, sir. No, sir. Based on the fact that 
we have the smart we have smartphones we have technology we have communication and connection with each other we have the spiritual tools we have enlightened people it's just all that has to happen is a spreading <clears throat> a spreading of knowledge and and resources and you know we have all the resources that every person on earth could could sit there and be happy and content so we're not we're not at a deficit in any uh in any way our only problem is ourselves and and our ego yeah hey let me tell us a, a, a small known fact i think under 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 publicized fact that the u.s has a debt of about 30 trillion dollars the government but the u.s households have a net worth of about 150 trillion dollars Mm-hmm. So if anybody wants to look at the death, debt, 30 trillion, realize the households have a net worth of 150 trillion, five times as much. Mm-hmm. So don't let anybody tell you that there's some sort of hole that's sucking wound in the middle and everybody is dying and everything. No, per capita GDP is higher than it ever was. And this debt situation is a complicated situation, but nevertheless, don't think there's not a lot more net worth hanging out against that debt. There is. Yeah, so we were talking about Fear versus faith. There's no point in just sitting there in fear. So I believe that faith is what gets us through. And um, that that whole conversation was faith in humanity. And then it's a faith in a higher faith in the universe, whatever that means to you. And then, yeah, faith in ourselves, which is I like this thing I learned you know, in, in therapy circles about like, uh, you you got, you got a baby bird on a branch, you got a, a mama bird and a baby bird and the mama bird has to push the, push the baby bird off at some point to go fly. And, you know, that bird has to have faith in itself that I forget what this, well, I forget what I'm trying to say right now, but, but the, the idea is, is that the bird has to have faith in itself to fly. And that's I mean, and we need to be like the bird. That's that's the point of the thing is is that I need to have faith in myself that if you push me out into any situation, I can still fly and not be afraid. Cuz I have the permanent essence. I, I have, have consciousness and, and my consciousness has understanding. We got this and the consciousness and understanding that I've been given are very, very powerful and are very, very good at, for example, if you're a bird, they're great at flying. Yeah, and on on the topic of obsession, um, you might think it's the end of the world. Let's say it's a job. I had a a guy on the show talking about he was obsessing over getting a job. It's like my advice to anybody Mm -hmm. uh, over any obsession is you're going to be okay on the other side, whether you get the job or you don't get the job. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in your, and whether you get the girl or you don't get the girl, you're going to have faith in yourself and you're going to be okay on the other side. Totally. I was uh, unemployed when I met you and I was very kind of surly when anybody would ask me about job hunt. I'd say, yeah, job hunt, whatever. And, you know, because I was like, I definitely don't want to, every time I see everybody, like, how's the job hunt, and then sit there and get all miserable about it because I haven't gotten a job yet, and blah, 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 you know what I mean? I wanted to be like, you know, minimize that whole thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, we got to, of course, this, it's, it's not, it's just not healthy. To just obsess. Yeah, I, I already I already know I didn't get a job off yet. I don't need to sit there and just relive and relive and relive and pre-live it, right? So I say fear is the enemy and negativity is the enemy. And that's how I see it. I'll keep banging that drum. Dig. Dig, brother. Someone came on here to compliment me, so I want to throw that up there. Brandon, <laughs> wanted to tell you when I was watching Roger's interview that you were looking great. So thankful for you and all the difference you are making. Well, you are much appreciated. I think that's Brandy. And um, thank you for saying that. You know, I, uh, you know, not everybody is as kind as you, Brandy. Mm, Mr. Frank. Yes, sir. Any final thoughts on obsession? Uh, 
Well, I was just obsessing, so I I, I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> you forgot what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot what I wanted to say because I was obsessing about this girl. Uh, yeah, this girl, Brandy. Well, no, a mythical girl. I'm, oh. I was just trying to make a joke there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear you. Um, right. No, no. Hey, it happens where our minds can drift, and we got to just pull them back into reality, and and pull them back into, um, you know, I I'm I have a desire to inspire Frank. Yeah, baby. That means I share I share my story to try to help other people. Well, it's beautiful. I tell you, a lot of times when I'm watching your show, I feel a release. I feel a release of tension. I feel a release of fear. I feel a release of, uh, you know, uh, uh, regrets. And uh, this is this is great. This is exactly what I want to be doing. You know, is feeling a nice, beautiful release. I'm so grateful to have you on my show. You add a lot to me in my life. This will make sense to you. I see the Brandon K show as a portal. Tig. So whatever that means to you, I feel like I get to start connecting to my my higher power when I'm in my when I'm making my show. Beautiful, beautiful. My show is me connecting with the people I care about, yourself and and others. So I mean, obviously that's going to be a portal, you know. Right. So with that, we'll keep it short today, and I will say we are in the middle of dealing with week. We did dealing with addiction and alcoholism, dealing with anxiety, dealing with depression with Frank, which is another spot that we went and talked about obsession we got into a really great conversation there there's a three minute preview click on that that'll hit you to the live stream dealing with grief and anger with michelle we did um dealing with a uh inner voice and identity with franklin and dealing with major life changes with roger yesterday oh yeah and dealing with life lessons with nick so dealing with weak has gone two weeks. I definitely like to talk about these deeper issues. And um, we'll be back tomorrow with dealing with rejection with my cousin Patrick. We're going to do a dealing with suicidal thoughts with a friend. Mm. Yeah, mm. that'll be a good one. Did you struggle with suicidal thoughts, Frank? No, but uh, in the worst of moments of my whole life, yeah, I felt them a couple of times. And uh, yeah, ooh, that's hard time. That is hard time, brother. I deal with them all the time. Do you? But it's just, again, the shoot, they just can go through and I don't have to pay attention to them, you know? Good, 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 good. I'm sorry to hear that, brother. I did not know that. I'm so sorry. They're just thoughts. They're right. just thoughts. But I have a very chaotic mind. And um, and I'll talk about, you know, accepting all that. And, uh, and you know, some people get closer to others. I, I never attempted to, to, to off myself. I just have the thoughts, you know. And some of us just have the thoughts. Sure, sure. But, uh, yeah, and then, and then I got a friend... Who might come on and talk about uh well tr trauma i i i got one uh, we're gonna talk about trauma and uh withdrawal so yeah i got a, i got more i got more so many episodes and i hope people are finding them and thank you for joining me my friend thank you bk we'll have you on in a little while and at the at the latest we'll have you on to talk about the music you've been making the music we've been making together. Making together. Yes, brother. I love it. And I know you've been so busy making shows. And, you know, just because I send you something doesn't mean you have to do it right away. You'll do it when you get to it and not before. And that's perfectly cool, brother. Yeah. When I'm at my bar, I'm asking people. I work security at a bar. Someone showed me. Um, what is this app? It's, it's, is it Band Lab? Band Lab. So whatever you send me, I can then put it into band lab, put a microphone in, and then sing or rap over it. But yeah, Frank makes the beats and the music, 
and then you send it to me and then I could I just got to put it in a band lab and then create from there. Cool. All right. Thank you for joining me, my friend. Yes, sir. I'm going to see you next time. And